and welcome to this virtual worship experience of the Agawam Congregational Church in Agawam, Massachusetts on this fifth Sunday of Easter and traditional Mother's Day. I am Deacon Dave Bertignoli. Preaching today is the Reverend Tom Howells, our interim minister and pastor. Janet Brown is our Director of Family Ministries and member in discernment in the Hamden Association of the United Church of Christ. Ann Tapley is our accompanist. Because the restrictions on gathering in groups is still in effect, we are not able to be get together as a congregation. Though this can be frustrating, it does not overwhelm us as we are together as one in the body of Christ, as a faith community. We want to share this moment with you as we hold one another and our neighbors near and far in prayer in these challenging times. Let us share now a moment of worship and prepare our hearts together as we sing the hymn, O God, whose steadfast love. sisters on one journey of faith. We are all one family, given gifts and talents to share. We are all one family, united in love, united in peace, united in Christ our Lord. Let us worship as one. Now hear the opening prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. O God, who has taught us to keep all your heavenly commandments by loving you and our neighbors, grant us the spirit of peace and grace that we may be both devoted to you with our whole heart and united to each other with a pure will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Our gospel reading today comes from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that not were so, 
Would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father, living in me, who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or at least, believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This ends the reading of our Gospel. Thanks be to God. Hi everybody. I brought my two kiddos to our family ministry moment today. Um, since it's Mother's Day, I thought I'd bring my two. I found a couple of funny things for you this week, and I think it's important that we talk about how mothers aren't only our biological moms, but sometimes there are more people than that. So I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all of the moms, all of the extended moms, all of the adopted moms, all of the aunts and the sisters, and everybody who has a mom as well. So in that spirit, Here's a few funny moments for you. Why did God make mothers? She's the only one who knows where the scotch tape is. It's true in my house. <laughs> Maddie, why did God make mothers? Mostly to clean the house. Careful, child. Next question. How did God make mothers? He used dirt just like the rest of us. Dirt? Dirt. 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 Okay. Maddie, how did God make mothers? He... Magic plus superpowers and a lot of strength. That's a good one. A lot of stirring with the magic and the superpowers. I like that one. Our final question that I hope will make you smile on this Mother's Day is why did God give you your mother and not some other mom. God know, knew she likes me a lot more than other people's moms like me. I don't know if that's true. And Maddie, why did God give you your mother and not some other mom? We're related. Very true, we are related. Let's pray together. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you give life and care for your church. Bless these women as we celebrate this day in their honor. May they be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor and appreciate them with a spirit of profound respect. May they live out their vocation as Christians, mothers, and guide their children in faith. 
guide and protect them in challenging times and help them to continue to trust in you all the days of their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me now in our prayers of the people. Each time I pause, you may respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you thankful that our hope is found in you. Remind us that the signs of Jesus' resurrection are all around us. We remember this day our friends who suffer from illness and loss. Grant them your healing, be their strength, and help us to be your tangible compassion toward them. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are lonely, for those who are in danger, we pray your comfort, safety, and endurance be upon them. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, help us to continue to serve others as you have called us to in the ways that we can, in prayer, in, in encouragement, and by staying apart that we might keep others safe. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Grant us an extra measure of faith so that as we face doubt and fear, we may continue in confidence, trusting in you, and emerge as strong witnesses to your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Almighty God, source of all life and love, we give you thanks and praise that we are not alone, that we live in the world that you have made and that you are always creating and sustaining the world by the power of your word. We thank you for our families. Today, we especially thank you for mothers and the love and care which they gave and are giving to their children. May our prayer warm the hearts of all mothers today. May they know that they are loved and precious. Let them know they are worthy in their call. There is no failing so great that cannot be forgiven, forgotten, and renewed in you, Lord. May mothers today all over the world feel in their heart the joys of being called a mother and in all their goodness and all their failings be blessed in your love and forgiveness. And grant, O oh Lord, that we may serve you as we have been served, seeing each person as special, observing each person as unique from every other, listening to each person with our hearts as well as our ears, helping and being helped in ways that maintain the dignity of the helper and the help. We pray for our president and all our political leaders, that they might have wisdom and humility in making decisions that affect us all. And be with the medical professionals and grant them insight and discernment in the proper course of action for the well-being of our nation and the world. And be with us all, that we might have patience and endurance through this difficult time. Grant to our churches and places of worship might soon be open to gather in community to worship and fellowship and serve. We offer these prayers in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. At our time of offering, we are reminded that our gifts are still necessary through this time of separation. We want to thank those of you who have continued to support our ministry by submitting your pledges through mail, by stopping by the office, or by automatic payment from, the, from your bank. Thank you very much. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we offer unto you our gifts of gratitude for all you have done for us. With them, we pledge ourselves to serve one another in love and kindness, not only by words, but also by deeds. In Jesus' name, amen. Our New Testament reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house 
to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they are destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Do you feel at home in the church? I have heard several people say that they felt very much at home the first time they entered the Agawam Congregational Church. Others might feel less a part of it. A place for you is the title of my sermon today. And while I am pleased as you should be that someone feels a part of this local church or community of believers in Christ, that's not what I'm talking about today. I am talking about your place in the church, the body of Christ, the people of God. God says, I have a place for you. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, we read about a place that Jesus has prepared for us in heaven. Now we often hear this passage of scripture at funerals or memorial services. It's wonderful news. It is gospel. Good news. And in our other text for today from Peter's letter, we have several metaphors applied to believers in Jesus Christ, members of his church, the ekklesia in Greek, which means called out ones. To the believers who are called out. Now, you might be relatively new to the faith, a, a virtual baby in Christ. Peter says that we all should be like newborn babies desiring milk. In our case, the milk is the word of God and spiritual life. We don't understand it all yet. But we should have the desire to grow up in our salvation. Well, what does that mean? What is implied in our being a Christian? How can we act more grown up in our faith? Not just knowledge about our faith and God, but applied knowledge. The benefit of partaking in spiritual life. And so just as a baby benefits from the milk without fully comprehending what is happening, we are to partake of the word of God and let it have its beneficial effect on us. There is a place for you in the family. Maybe Maybe you're not into family and babies and that kind of thing. You're more into building and contractor oriented. Peter has an illustration for you as well. He says that we are to be living stones built into a spiritual house full of life and vitality. Our spiritual house is a dynamic experience, living, moving, breathing, interacting. 
The living stones in God's house, the church, that is you, are to be related in such a way that the structure becomes one. Each block has its place and there is a place for you in it. In fact, without you, there is something missing. The next reference Peter makes can be either a metaphor or maybe even a description. He says that we are to be a holy priesthood. There is, in Reformed theology, the concept of the priesthood of all believers. We are each to function as priests, which Peter says involves offering spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now we need to know what the function of a priest is if we are going to be one. Now Peter here is not talking about the Roman Catholic or Episcopal priesthood. They won't be formed until some time after his writing. He is referring to the Jewish priests and their responsibility or function was to represent the people to God. Just as a prophet represented God to the people, so the priest moves in the other direction, representing the people to God. We are to go before God with spiritual sacrifices on behalf of ourselves and others. Now, the Apostle Paul indicates what that involves in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, when he says it, it basically involves everything that we can do with our physical bodies. We are to make our physical functions a living sacrifice to God. We become living sacrifices. Here again, life is the key, as it was in the building blocks. We are to be active in our faith, doing what pleases God. And there is a place for you in the priesthood of believers. There are several other metaphors or descriptions that Peter uses in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. He said that we are a chosen people. There is a place for you in the people of God because God chose you. This is always known after the fact. We cannot guess as to whom is in or out ourselves. But we do know that those who are in Christ are chosen by God. Peter says we are also a royal priesthood. Now earlier we were called a holy priesthood. Now Peter says that we are to be a holy nation. Faith is not only an individual personal experience. It brings us into a nation. We are related in a special way in Christ. The nation is holy. That is set apart for God. And there is a place for you in this spiritual nation where together we live for God and in God's ways. The next phrase in Peter's description is interesting. In the Old English, that is the King James Version, he calls us peculiar people. Now, now that may be true in some cases in the church. There are some peculiar people, but that's not what it means here. What does it mean for us? Not that we are odd, but rather that we are special. The New International Version uses the phrase, a people belonging to God. 
And so it is for the world used referred to possession. We are a people who belong to God. We are God's possession. And there is a place for you in this blessed group. Now how does one find his or her place and become part of all of this? Earlier in his letter, Peter said that it is through God's great mercy that we are given new birth and new hope. Hence, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word or crave pure spiritual milk that we may grow. John's gospel that was read for us today reminds us that it is through faith in Jesus the way that we find our place in God's family. There is a place for you. We are thankful that you are here and pray that we might live together as a family of God. Amen. Let us offer now a common commission. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant us to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together we may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go and be a blessing in your world. Become doers of the word and not listeners only. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.